Dan Bucaroni was a lanky heavyweight who rose to prominence in the early 1950s and was promised a title shot against Rocky Marciano on three separate occasions, but the bouts never came to fruition. Uh, he grew up the son of a barber in Philadelphia with uh, five brothers and two sisters. He earned his keep early on as he shined shoes, uh, sold items door to door, and uh, also working as a pin boy in a bowling alley. Uh, he would join the United States Navy in 1945 and take up the sport of boxing. Uh, he would win the Navy light heavyweight title while rising to become the instructor of the Navy's boxing program. Uh, he would win the National Golden Gloves and would win all 40 of his amateur fights. So Bucaroni would have an opportunity to join the Naval Academy, but turned it down, instead choosing to become a professional fighter in November of 1947. Uh, Bucaroni's manager of record would be the mobster Frank Blinky Palermo, and he was trained by Jimmy Wilson, who trained all of the fighters in Palermo's stable, uh, such as Ike Williams and Coley Wallace. Uh, Bucaroni was nicknamed the Butcher Boy as a play on his last name, and he would win his first 14 fights before dropping a decision to Dick Wagner over six rounds. Bucaroni would then win his next 18 fights before taking a huge step up in class against Irish Bob Murphy. And Murphy would have too much experience uh, flooring Bucaroni in the first round and battering him in close quarters before stopping him in the fifth. Bucaroni would rebound, avenging his defeat against Wagner in a gory bloodbath which saw him suffer a bloody nose and a gash over his eye while he would split open Wagner's lip and floor him three times en route to a decision victory. In December of 1951, he would face the 47-1 Roland Lestarza. Bucaroni would come into the bout as a 3-1 underdog, but took the fight to the uncharacteristically sluggish Lestarza. The two would have a conversation in the middle of the sixth round when allegedly Bucaroni asked Lestarza why he wasn't throwing any punches, and his opponent responded that he would when the chance presented itself. Bucaroni is a rangy fighter who's just come up to the heavyweight division after boxing as a light heavy. The stars is more or less of a picture boxer. He holds his hands high. He's cautious, methodical, almost mechanical. Bucaroni scoring very well with the right. Rocks uh, the stars are back into the ropes and the stars is hurt. This was the turning point of the fight in the earlier rounds. The stars are covering up now after that hard right. Send him back on his heels. And again he's cornered this time with a body attack. Bucaroni trying for an early knockout here. A lot of punishment for uh, Lestarza to take. Trying to hold on to the stronger Bucaroni, pushing him back. Another barrage as Lestarza groggy and holding on. The referee is Al Burrow. Stars are numb by that earlier right hand. Still hasn't shaken the cobwebs out. It looks here as if the stars is going down. A slippery target, however. Popping. And the stars is tottering. Dan trying to measure him to put him away here in round two. Desperately to put the stars away. It would be a tremendous uh, victory for the Philadelphia Butcher Boy. The stars of tonight is rated one, two, three in the tops of the heavyweights. He 
lost a highly disputed split decision to Rocky Marciano. Using it very prettily through most of this round. Hear the crowd yell behind him there as he scores one of his best rallies. Is carrying the attack to Bucaroni in round eight. The stars are moving in now, braving that right hand. Fighting what is for him a reckless fight. Coming into the final seconds now of a great fight here in Madison Square Garden between Roland Mastarza and Dan Bucaroni. And there's the bell and the referee and both men congratulate each other. Announcer Johnny Addy gives the decision which is unanimous for Bucaroni. Now, Mastarza blamed his poor performance on a battle with the flu a week earlier. Uh, five months later, the two would rematch and this go around. Mastarza would drop Bucaroni five times and score a unanimous points win. A Bucaroni would come back. Floor contender Dave Davey in the second before taking a decision. He would then take on ex-Marine Danny Nardico, who was awarded two Purple Hearts and a Silver Star for his heroics in World War II. Now, the victory over Nardico was followed by another win over Dave Davey, 
which put Bucaroni on Marciano's radar uh, for a shot at the heavyweight title. Uh, Bucaroni was now ranked number four in the world, and he would stop light heavyweight contender Wes Bascom in seven one-sided rounds, and Bascom cried and created a scene after the fight was stopped, uh, storming around the ring in protest. All Bucaroni had to do now was keep winning and wait for his chance. Uh, he would decision Tommy Harrison, uh, but suffer a cut eye and was kept on the shelf for another three months. Then he would face Jimmy Slade. He would floor Slade and win the decision. Then in November of 1953, uh, Bucaroni would use Freddie Bashore as a punching bag for eight rounds before getting his biggest victory to date against a uh, Hein Tenhoff in January of 1954. After the fight, uh, Bucaroni said, quote, I think I have earned a title shot and I know I would make a good showing against Marciano. And Marciano's manager, Al Weil, said Bucaroni could possibly face Marciano in February of 1954, but that was predicated on the outcome of the Ezra Charles Bob Satterfield fight. If Charles won, he would get Marciano in June. If Satterfield won, then Bucaroni would fight Marciano. Charles would stop Satterfield in two rounds, and Bucaroni would be forced once again to wait. Rather than sit on the sidelines, Bucaroni elected to face the unknown Hurricane Jackson for a guaranteed paycheck of $10,000. The gamble backfired as Jackson was relentless, hitting Bucaroni at will, shutting his right eye, and had Bucaroni reeling around the ring before the fight was stopped in the sixth round. Bucaroni wanted a rematch, but instead he traveled to Dortmund, Germany, and would lose a decision to European heavyweight champion Heinz Newhouse. The consecutive defeats caused Bucaroni to drop all the way down to number 13 in the rankings, and in December of 1954, he would be favored against the mild bull of the pampas, Cesar Brion of Argentina, and Bucaroni would lose a split decision. Now his decline in the rankings were now insurmountable, and Bucaroni would call it quits. But he would remain in the fight game as a manager and trainer. By the late 1960s, he would manage and train Philadelphia contender Stanley Kitten Hayward, as well as become a shareholder in Cloverlay, a syndicate of Philadelphia businessmen who managed Joe Frazier. And now a family man, Bucaroni would work in sales and public relations for Casser Distillers. Uh, he would write a book on self-defense while opening a, a boxing and bodybuilding gym, which uh, had an occasional visit from Muhammad Ali. He'd also dabble in acting and commercials. Bucaroni would suffer a heart attack and pass away at the age of 80 in April of 2008. His final record was 50 wins against 6 defeats with 34 knockouts.